power there. And but Brother Fred is going to to do some ex. This is an excellent message, and and so we'll we'll begin. And I'm going to turn it over to him. Okay. The title of the message tonight is "Power of Decrees." Um, now. A decree is something that God has spoken about in his word, and it's very powerful. And we're going to show you how to use it. Uh, it's a skill that we all need to use, and we have to develop a skill. It's like any other skill. We have to develop that skill. And so we're going to be talking about how to develop a skill of making decrees. Now, what is a decree? Well, it's an official statement that must happen. You know, I can make a statement, and this is what Sherry was talking about on a declaration or a proclamation. I can make a statement, but it might not happen. Uh, for example, I might make a positive mm -hmm. statement, a positive statement about uh, my physical weight. Uh, uh, let's say I, I say I'm losing 10 pounds, a uh, physical way. Well, that's a positive statement, it's, uh, but there's no power behind it. And what we're talking about with a decree, it is, it has power behind it, and it must happen. When this a decree is made, it's like a law being enacted uh, by a, a, a legislative body or a uh, it, a, an order issued by a judge. For example, when a judge says a prisoner in a particular prisoner uh, must be released, well, that's a decree. That That is an order from the judge, and it has to happen. The, the, the prisoner doesn't uh, have anything to say against that, can't oppose it. And the people, let's say that he was an armed robber, <clears throat> and he's gone to prison, and uh, now the judge uh, uh, makes an issues an order that he must be released from prison. Well, the people he stole from, they cannot oppose that. It, it's going to happen. They can't keep him in prison uh, just because they were injured by this uh, person when he was out. Uh, and let's say with as an armed robber, um, they might want, want him to stay in prison. But when the judge makes a decree, uh, then it cannot be opposed. It must happen. It's the same when you and I make a decree. Uh, it must happen. And uh, so let's look at some uh, different uh, verses of, about this. We'll start with uh, Job. And I'll ask my reader here to read Job. Okay. Uh, 22 verse 28 okay we'd also like to welcome mary and sophia with us uh, tonight god bless god bless you uh joe 22 uh verse 28 this is from the amplified bible you will also decide and decree a thing and it will be established for you and the light of god's favor will shine upon your ways okay so i'm saying this is a skill we need to know how to use it. And this verse here in Job says, you make a decree and it will be established. It's going to happen. It cannot be opposed. You make a decree and it will uh, happen. That That's pretty exciting. We need to know how to make decrees that are effective. And because they carry with them a lot of power, they must happen. Amen. And, and the kind of decrees we're talking about really are decreeing what God is decreeing, what God is saying in his word. Mm. Uh, when we hear uh, the Father by his spirit, uh, then we begin to uh, declare that and decree that. So yeah. just a simple declaration, see, uh, has no power behind it, but a decree has the power of heaven behind it. We're bringing heaven on earth. I believe Sherry has something. Well, I just wanted to give an example of what he what Brother Fred is, is talking about, and that is, uh, I could have quoted uh, when they they diagnosed me with terminal cancer, I could have quoted Psalms 118, verse 17, because that's the word of God. And I could have made a declaration uh, that I would not die, but live and, and declare the works of the Lord. However, when he put that in my spirit man, 
when he woke me up at 3 a.m. in the morning and he put that scripture in my heart, in my spirit. And when I brought it forth, and when I spoke it out of my mouth, it became a decree. It became a decree because God was backing it. He was the one that gave me the scripture. And when I spoke it out of my mouth and decreed it out of my mouth, then it was established, just like this word here says, it was established and God's favor uh, was upon it. And, and, and that's exactly what happened. I'm here with you today. And that was almost 28 years ago. Okay, so the scripture came alive to Sherry and she spoke it out and she made a decree uh, from that. Now, why is it not just our words, but there's some power behind it? Well, you look at God. When God speaks, uh, his words carry power. Uh, when he spoke the universe into existence, it came into existence because his word is powerful. It's a carrier of God's power. And not only that, I want you to see in Jeremiah 112, and I'll ask Sherry to read Jeremiah 112, we'll see that he watches over his words to perform them so that they will happen, okay? And this is from the Amplified Bible, Jeremiah 112. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am actively watching over my word to fulfill it. Okay, so Hallelujah. when his word becomes alive to you, you hear uh, by the spirit, you hear a verse come alive like Sherry heard Psalm uh, 118, 118 verse 17. Verse 17 said that you are not going to die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. See, that became alive. She could speak it out mm -hmm. and it had the power of God behind it because God is alert and Amen. he's watching over his word to perform it. Now, I hear a lot of people just simply quoting scripture. They're quoting scripture, yeah. but it has no power behind it. Yeah, they it. just throw it out. They just throw it out. And, and so why does it not have power? But, well, because it's not his decree, even though he has spoken it at one time, it's not alive. Now, he's not watching over it to perform it. But when he speaks something now, when he brings it to life now, He's alert, watching over his word to perform it. Now, not only is God watching over his word, I have another verse, and this is Psalm 103, verse 20, and says his angels are watching over his words to perform them. Mm -hmm. So let's read this here. Please. Okay, it says, bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. Okay, so... When you hear a scripture spoken to you by the Holy Spirit and you begin to decree that word, God himself puts the power into that word to, to perform it. He's watching over it to perform it and he sends his angels uh, to minister to you. That's what Hebrews 1 14 says. Mm -hmm. And his angels hearken to his voice. Now, it's not just the voice that he has said. It's the voice that you say when you say his voice. When you repeat what you are hearing in the spirit, by his spirit, the angels are performing it. Not only is God himself putting his power in his word to perform it, now we're seeing that his angels. So this is not you performing uh, the decree. It's God mm -hmm. performing it. It's not uh, your power. It's his power. Yeah. It's his angels watching over his voice to perform it. Okay. So there are some conditions that each of us have to make and uh, in order for this decree uh, to be effective. And I, I want uh, Sherry to read Mark chapter 11, verse uh, 23, because this is speaking about what you say. And uh, so it has a lot to do with, it's one thing that you can speak words idly. You can just speak a bunch of idle words. You can speak, you can uh, memorize scripture and speak them out, but it's just idle unless it's in your heart. 
and there's some things, conditions in their heart, and the two conditions of the words that you speak out, you have to have your heart full of faith, mm -hmm. and first, and second, no doubt no in your doubt. heart. So that's what this verse says. Let's look at it. Mark eleven twenty three. Truly I say unto you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he is saying is going to happen, it will be granted to him. Okay. Hallelujah. So for a decree to work, it has, it has a lot to do with what is in your heart and what is in your mouth. First of all, you have to speak out with your mouth what you're hearing by the Spirit of God. And when you speak that out, and then there are those two conditions in the heart. You have to believe in your heart and you have to have no doubt. Well, it's one thing for me to say, well, I have no doubt. But really, the only way you know for sure that you have no doubt in there is that you keep your heart pure and, and that you're doing his will and, and, and you're beginning to hear his word and let faith arise in you. Mm -hmm. See, where does faith come from? Well, Romans 10, 17, this mm -hmm. is the last verse I want Sherry to read to us, is Romans 10, 17. So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. Okay, so we have to hear the word. Now, now it's not just some individual speaking it, but it's the anointed word. It's the word when when the Lord speaks it, when, when the Holy Spirit speaks it to you, or when an anointed minister speaks the word to you, it becomes uh, an anointed word, and it be builds faith within you because you've heard it. Now, if you never hear the word, you don't have faith. Mm -hmm. We're giving a, we are each given a measure of faith, and, that, and we're born again by that measure of faith. But we need to have that faith increase. Yeah. And the way the faith increases is that we hear the anointed word. And particularly as we spend time with the Lord in his presence, he speaks to us. He causes faith to arise in us and all of the doubt will disappear. Yeah. We, can't, we can't speak and have doubt in our heart and think that those decrees will be effective. It mm -hmm. has to do with our heart. Sherry has something to yes, say. Yes, I have another example here, and that is about uh, making, uh, having the word of God alive on the inside of you. Uh, when he speaks uh, a scripture to you or a verse to you, and then I've, I've had this happen over and over when he speaks a verse to me, and there is, it's, it's called the quickening. And those of you that have been, um, pregnant, um, and most of you are ladies, uh, if you've had that uh, pregnancy, you know that there is a, a time where you actually feel uh, the, the embryo or the baby inside of you, and that's called the quickening, and, and that's what it, it it's comes alive. It, 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 you know that there's something there. And I, that's happened to me with the word of God over and over again. When a scripture, when he speaks a scripture to me, and then there is that quickening or where he makes it alive in me. And then that's when, that's the word that he's going to watch over and perform. Okay. So we have this decree. And it's because the Lord has spoken something to us. We begin to speak it out of our mouth but our heart is full of faith and we don't have any doubt there. Right, right. Now, I want to look at that definition of a decree again because it really has two aspects. And one, it brings forth a promise of God. And a good concept to understand bringing forth something written in the word of God is Luke chapter two, verse one, where uh, Jesus uh, was going to be born, and uh, there was uh, in the Roman Empire on their books that there would be a census taken of all the inhabitants of the Roman Empire. Now, that, it's like a promise. It was just written on the book, and it just sat there. 
Uh, and for 27 years, they did not take a census, even though there was a law saying that all of the inhabitants of Rome, of the Roman Empire, would be uh, counted in a census, okay? But it took the decree of Caesar Augusta. See, he was the person with authority. He decreed mm -hmm. that there would be a census. And so for 27 years, it was written in the books. It had not been manifested until a person with authority stood up and said, there will be, I decree, there will be a census taken. Now, when that happened, Mary and Joseph knew that there had to be a census taken. They had to be counted. So they were away from Bethlehem, but they had to go down to Bethlehem to be counted in a census. Well, that's the way your promises can be. You can look in the word of God. There are a lot of promises there that God has promised you, mm -hmm. but they haven't been manifested yet. There are a lot of them that have not been manifested. It might be about your healing, or it might be about your prosperity, or it might about, um, be about your children, uh, children prospering, or about uh, prospering in your job. There, you can find all kinds of promises written down in God's Word, and they have not been manifested yet. And why is that? Because no one with authority, in other words, I'm talking to you, because you haven't stood up with authority and with faith in your heart and decreed mm -hmm. the promise. Mm -hmm. See, there are many promises. You need to find out what promises God is wanting to manifest in your life. This is a really important concept. We don't want to be uh, have those promises in the word of God and not have them manifested. The thing that is going to activate the promises that are written in God's word concerning you, concerning your spouse, concerning your children, concerning your family, concerning your finances, those promises that you have not, that have not been manifested yet, the reason they haven't been manifested is that you haven't decreed them. You haven't stood up with authority and decreed the promises of God because this is a skill Hallelujah. you need to activate the promises that God has given you. God has given all of us many, many promises that we haven't walked in yet. We need skills to manifest those. And this one is a very important skill. When you find out a promise that God has for you, that he wants to fulfill in your heart, he wants to, de he desires to fulfill this promise toward you, you stand up and decree it with authority. You have to have confidence. Uh, I believe in the first John, he says we have to come to him with confidence. When we have confidence, uh, then he hears, and we know that he hears, and we have the petition we ask for. Mm -hmm. So we want promises to come to pass in our life. We need skills to know how to bring these about. And this is a very important skill. This decreeing something, it will be established. It will happen. It cannot be opposed. So the first definition of decree then, it's an, a, a statement uh, that must come to pass. And, um, mm -hmm. but there's another uh, definition of it. And, and that's from the Old Testament, a decree uh, and it cuts off and it stops uh, the opposition. Mm. So not only does it have uh, the definition that mm. it's going to come to pass, it must come to pass, but also the second definition, it stops the enemy, the, enemy, the plans of the enemy. Woo, so, hallelujah. So if you decree that there is wealth and blessings in your house, decree it in your home, then you decree it and that brings it to pass and it stops the plans of the enemy against blessings and wealth in your home. Hallelujah. That's Hallelujah. why decrees are so important. 
not only do they bring about the promises, but they also stop the plans of the enemy that that stop those uh, promises that they come against the promises. So it's those both of those aspects. Oh wow! Now uh, it, it's just very important for us to be decreeing things, but we have to have our heart clean. Yes. We have to have it full of faith uh, and have no doubt in it. Now another good example. Sherry's already given you one application of it, and, and that was her testimony when God spoke a scripture to her. She began to confess it. She began to confess it. Uh, she didn't just confess it one time. How often did you confess it? Uh, sometimes it was many times during the day, over and over and over again. Okay, so that becomes the her decree, and and eventually it was all manifested. And so she's alive yeah. today because she had a promise from God and she decreed it. She brought it into existence. She decreed it, and it with manifested. Power, and that promise was manifested. I want to look at another promise in the scripture. And uh, I'll just tell you this story, but it's in uh, uh, Jeremiah 29. And there's probably, there's a verse there that we're probably all familiar with, uh, that God has a good plans for all of us. He, he has good plans. But even before, and that, that verse is 11, but but before 11, there comes 10, and verse 10 uh, says, and this is uh, talking Jeremiah, Jeremiah, God speaking to Jeremiah, and he tells Jeremiah that, um, that Jerusalem was a very wicked place, and they had gone away from God, and they were going to be carried off into captivity, and, and God says to Jeremiah, uh, beginning in verse 10, he said, I'm going to restore my people mm. uh, to this city in after 70 years. So here's a promise. You mm -hmm. see it? Uh, Jerusalem's going to be destroyed, but they're not going to be destroyed forever. Uh, they they're, were destroyed because they went away from God. They sinned against God. But God gave a promise that there's going to be restored uh, after 70 years. And then he goes on, not just to verse 11, but he says, I have a good plan. He's, he's got a good plan for his people. He's going, to restore, he's, going, he's going to restore Jerusalem. But then he says in the next couple of verses uh, that we have to seek him. Uh, we have to seek him and pray and seek him with our whole heart. We will find him when we... So he's giving us some conditions on why is Jerusalem going to be restored? How is this process going to work? So he said, I'm going to restore it in 70 years, but there are conditions. You have to seek me and you have to pray to me and you have to seek me with your whole heart. Mm. Okay, so there they go. They go to Babylon for 70 years. Now, we pick up the story 70 years later, and Daniel is over in Babylon, uh, and now he's with the Persians uh, because Darius is the, the uh, king in, he's the ruler in uh, Persia over Babylon, okay? So, Daniel is reading the scriptures, and where do you think he's reading He's reading in Jeremiah, and when he gets down to Jeremiah 29, he finds out the 70 years of captivity for uh, the people of God is has now passed, and it's time to restore uh, the people of God to Jerusalem and rebuild Jerusalem. Okay, so this is Daniel. 70 years later, he's over in Babylon. He's reading this promise of God. It's like you and me reading a promise in God's word. And we see, oh, it's time for this promise, promise. to be restored. Yes. Woo. Okay. So now we picked up the story and we're in Daniel chapter nine, uh, verses one through three. And Daniel begins to seek God. He begins to pray and fast, 
and seek God. Mm. Because not only did he see that the 70 years was over with, but he also said, saw that somebody had to seek God with their whole heart. It didn't take two people. It didn't take a thousand people. Mm. It took Daniel. Daniel knew it was his responsibility yeah, yeah. to seek God with his whole heart. And he did. It wasn't just one simple decree. But what I'm talking about now, stewarding what God has said to you, making the decree. And like Sherry said, she made the decree over and over again. She prayed. She mm -hmm. thanked God. See, there's a stewarding of the promise. So you find out what God is promising you. It becomes alive to you. You begin to decree it, decree it maybe many times a day and begin to pray to God and seek God. That's exactly what happened with Daniel. Right. God had said in 70 years, uh, my people will be restored to Jerusalem. We will rebuild Jerusalem but somebody has to pray and seek me. So this is the stewarding of the decree. And that's what Sherry did. She stewarded the decree. Yeah. She never gave up on the decree, uh, up on the, on the promise. The promise had been spoken to her. It came alive. Now we see Daniel sees a promise in the word of God. It becomes alive to him. But there's some conditions that have to be met. He has to steward the promise. He has to steward it. And the way he stewards it, he's fasting and praying and seeking God with his whole heart. And then the Jerusalem is rebuilt. Oh, hallelujah. God hallelujah. restores it. So it's one thing to have a promise. And, and a lot of, of us see a promise in God's word to us. And, and we want to quote it one time and think that's it. Well, I'm talking mm -hmm. about a decree, something that will be effective, but it may not be just, it may not happen just from saying something one time. It's stewarding. It's watching over it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Isaiah 21 talks about watchmen. Uh, we're watchmen. Watchmen on the wall. Watchmen on the wall. And, and one of the things that we do, we see in <laughs> Isaiah 21 the first thing God says to the soldiers is anoint your shield. Mm. Put oil on your shield. Now, at that time, those shields, they may have had built partly from wood, but they have, would have leather uh, pieces on the, on the outside of the shields. And you had to put anointing uh, oil on that to keep them subtle and soft uh, so that the, the people would not be destroyed uh, in a in a battle with uh, swords or with spears, so you had to. Anoint. So the first thing God says to His people, first thing He says to us, is to anoint our shield of faith. Ooh, now, how do we anoint our shield of faith? We get in the presence of God. And the Holy Spirit, see, is the oil. So we spend time <laughs> fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We anoint. We anoint our shields with faith. Anoint with oil, the oil of the Holy Spirit. And then, then God says to the watchman, get up on the watchtower, get in your position mm -hmm. and, and look at things from my perspective. And so that's what God is saying to all of us. And, and that is anoint your shield uh, with the presence of the Holy Spirit and, and get in your position and watch and pray and, and hear what I will say to you and then you begin to decree oh, things the, uh, out of your mouth. Uh, you get faith built up in your heart. You begin to see from God's perspective because what God wants to do is bring heaven on earth in your life. He wants to bring the promises into your life. He's already made a lot of promises over each of you, and he wants you then to steward those promises and bring them into uh, manifestation. And that is uh, begin, becoming skillful with the decrees, making yeah. decrees, and that will change your situation. Now, we can be people of the world and, and just 
focus on worldly things mm -hmm. or we can be God's people Amen. and focus on, on the things of God and hear from God and Amen. be in the presence of God and hear what he says Amen. and decree it and it will come to pass. See, that's what Job 22, 28 says, we will decree a thing and it will be established. It's going to happen. And not only that, we're going to cut off the plans of the enemy mm -hmm. against our blessings. So thank you for thank you for being here today. Thank you, uh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I hope this will be a skill that you will put into your toolkit and begin to use but so that you can walk in the promises of God.